Buckle up for another episode of Ghost Facers, a Supernatural Rewatch podcast. My name is Richard, and sitting shotgun, as always, is my brother in podcasting, Reed. I'd like to get uh, the sweet onion chicken teriyaki on the Italian urban cheese. Oh, Italian? Uh, sure. Um, uh, uh, do you want some uh, fresh garlic on that? No! How dare you? Garlic on my $5 foot long? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Ghost! Ghost Facers! We miss you, Ghost! Your brothers were on! We're Ghost! Ghost Facers! Stay in the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot! Ghost! Ghost Facers! We miss you, Nightmare! We miss you, Dread! Ghost! Ghost Facers! We miss you, Faceless! We miss you, Dead! Welcome to Ghost Facers. Today we're discussing season four, episode number five, Monster Movie. Whoa. That's right. Uh, And today we are joined by actor, writer, and dungeon master, who you may recognize from TV shows such as Gotham, 12 Monkeys, and oh, I don't know, this very fucking episode. Welcome, (laughs) Todd Stashwick. Holy shit. Hey, everybody. I'm pretending I'm hearing thunderous applause. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't know if that's necessary. (laughs) Yeah, thank you so much. Thunderous applause. I, 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 Come on, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining us. This is uh, this is one of those kind of classic, mm-hmm. very fun little bit meta episodes of Supernatural yeah. that you get to get to be a part of. You're you're like the main. You're the main guy. It's uh, what what was that? From a thing you did 13 years ago. I, yeah, I mean, Jesus, God, right? the, yeah, the, the, the <laughs> time's passed, eh? But uh, what, what, is, what is it like to come in, maybe for our listeners who are, don't know, what's it like to come in for an episode of a show to sort of insert yourself with a, a group that works together week after week, but then kind of be the guy that the episode's kind of hinging on? What, yeah. What's that experience like? Well, uh, a couple things. There, there's one thing that's very supernatural specific, and that is, uh, I uh, I did a pilot with a 17 year old Jared Padalecki. 20 years ago. Yeah, so I knew Jared going <laughs> right, in. right. Um, you know, and, and when I was doing the show, there was only two series regulars. Right. Wow. So it was one and two on the call sheet, and I'd already, you know, passed the sniff test to one of them. So, uh, I uh, so that was it was a warm thing to step into. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew what the gig required, so I did my uh, I did my legwork ahead of time, so I was prepared. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then. You know, I was, what, I was 13 years ago. I was 40 <laughs> years old. So uh, I was a grown ass man. And, you know, what this was my job. So yeah. I don't, I don't have that kind of like, you know, and, and for majority of my career, I'm, I'm a professional guest star. Right. So I've had moments as a series regular and moments where I've had long stints on shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done two series regular shows and then I've done several recurring uh character so i i wasn't like gosh gee whiz tv man yeah uh, i i knew what the job was they also and there's also something about being in your 40s and they just trust you to do like the the whole thing about guest star work is don't mess the furniture like don't just come in someone else's house don't like just just don't break anything. Just do your thing, hit your mark, like swing for the fences and go. Have you guys uh, ever thought about, I don't know, putting the camera well, here and <laughs> yeah, 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 don't start doing that. Yeah, yeah. well no now now to that, um collaboration is part of the process. Yeah. So having ideas and and tactfully knowing how to share them, because sometimes what's on the page doesn't necessarily translate to what's you know boots on the ground. So totally. uh you suddenly go, wow, saying this or standing here doing this at this moment doesn't necessarily feel like the best version of this scene. Right. So if you have ideas and thoughts, and you may not know that until you're there doing it. 
uh, because you read it and you do it and you get to the thing, you start blocking the scene and you start saying the words and you go, oh, you know what? This is uh, this may not be landing the way the right. I know what the writers want this to be, mm -hmm. but exactly how it's written or what exactly the director goes, I think we want this may not bring out the most in the scene. And so you, you, you try to collaborate with your actors and collaborate with the director and the writers to make it the best version of the thing. Cause I'm just one wheel in this, uh, I'm one right. cog in this machine. And, and by season four, supernatural was super well oiled. Yeah. Oh, I can only yeah. imagine. They, they right? knew what they were. They knew the job. It's harder on, er, on shows that it's like the first season. Right. And you yeah. guest star. Cause they're still figuring out what the thing is. Totally. And I mean, I know that you are a big like sci-fi horror fan. And, and I mean, I I found an interview of you with What you. do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who's literally in front of like an entire room of, de of nerd shit and wearing a Dungeons and Dragons shirt. Yeah. Uh, I think you might be a fan of to cover uh, the Dungeons shit. and Dragons tattoo. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. And I, the Star Wars. Ooh. Oh, very nice. And the 12 Monkeys. Oh, and the shit. Batman. Love that. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I wear my nerd, my nerddom proud. My nerd blood runs deep. As well, you should. Well, you know, you've got your. Oh yeah, yeah. You've got your my supernatural. Super you got your, your, your pentagram. Yeah, this is this is actually uh, uh, the Aquarian star, which is the symbol of the. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, and then I've got my Batman tattoo here. Yeah, I've got a Doctor Who Kryptonian here. on my arm yeah. and Aquaman nice. Trident and yeah. uh, Doctor Manhattan. You get it? You yeah. get yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So I was at a bar the other day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna derail this conversation because I wanna. Um, I was at a bar the <laughs> other day, and, with, and my wife comes and she grabs me, and she's like, "You have to come with me right now." She was like, if you want to leave. So she, <laughs> she drags me to the uh, to the bartender, and she looks at the bartender, and she goes, show him. And the bartender <laughs> produces his right wrist, and it's a bat symbol. And he produces his left wrist, and no. it says, ha, ha. It says, ha, 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 ha. No. What? And, like, different font, different. He had yeah. the Keaton bat symbol, and I have the uh, the Bob Kane. Yeah. And so, uh, and then I have the Brian Boland, ha, ha, ha. Right, yeah. Uh, but he had more of, like, a Ledger Keaton thing going on. But come on, that's, that's crazy. Awesome. Right, and then I said I, I want to get the Joker card right here. Oh yeah, so that I always have. And then he finished my sentence because he's planning on doing the same thing. What? <laughs> so we made out. That's well, amazing. yeah, obviously that's what you would do. We're just gentle, hungry kisses. <laughs> I just I just booked myself in to get a Did Lord you? Of, to get a Lord of the Rings tattoo and also to get a Green Lantern tattoo on my finger. You're gonna get so. the ring? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I have uh, on my D and D tattoo. I have uh, Tolkien did illustrations in the original version of The Hobbit. Yeah. And then there's the uh, there's the smoke from the troll fire. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. I have the smoke from from the troll fire surrounding my D and D tattoo. Oh, I love that. And then that. I have st I have Sting. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. my god. So, Did we just yeah, I'm not, fall I'm in not love just with roaming Tom. for you. <laughs> that, man, that's awesome. I mean, we're, we're we're trying to like hold ourselves back cuz we're like we have a DC Comics podcast and we're trying to like gotta, keep it on here. We got to keep on. Yeah. 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 Awesome. keep it on cuz then we can talk about Gotham. Ah, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, well, if, as long as we don't scare you away this time, we're going <laughs> to beg you to come back to that other podcast cuz holy shit. You you talked about doing some of the legwork beforehand. I mean, Ooh. as a horror fan, I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that, the Rocky Horror. It's like, not Rocky Horror. Come on, no, Rolling I Stones. I just see red lips. I think Rocky Horror. God, I you know, it's the theater door. It's yeah. astounding. It's the Stones. Yeah, I want to uh, do an animated series called Little Tim, and it's Little Tim Curry, and it's like a little baby Tim Curry, <laughs> but he talks like adult Tim Curry. And he's like, Oh, Mama, I want chocolate. I've been oh, such a I naughty boy. That. Oh my I, god. I love that so oh, much. And he wears like schoolboy uniform and he just says, Oh mama, I believe I brought home a skunk. <laughs> and it's like it's always it's always something. It's very Edward Gorey. And it's and it's little Tim. Oh my god. Okay. So I'm gonna this try is, to get the rice. This is kind of connected to where I was going. Because yeah. that was a great that was a great Tim Curry voice. That's incredible. You're, Holy uh, thank you. You're <laughs> obviously, you know, like a, a, a fan of like horror genre and stuff like that. How much of the sort of like Bella Lugosi kind of stuff. Did you go back to pre All of this it. episode? Yeah. All of it. I watched. I, I so I immediately went out. Uh, even well for the audition, I just grabbed YouTube, but I went out and bought the nineteen uh, thirties like uh, the, the anniversary edition, and I just watched it and watched it nice. and watched it and watched it. And, I, and to the point where back when um, 
laptops had uh, disk drives. I kept it in my trailer so that I would watch scenes in between setups and takes. Right. Just because I really like, you're stepping into some shiny black big shoes and yeah. you want to honor that in whatever modicum you can because yeah. he did like 137 performances on Broadway, not Broadway, but on stage. Maybe it was Broadway. It was. But yeah. on stage before he ever shot the film. Yeah. So like he's Dracula. Well, wow. yeah. And I, it's so easy to fall into the trap of like doing accidentally doing someone else's impression like doing of Adam Sandler and hotel Transylvania. Or, yeah. Like doing, yeah. You're too many like steps removed from it. So, blur, you know. blur, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 but it's basically there's the Dracula accent that everybody does. And then there's the Hungarian accent that yeah. Bella Lugosi has, Yes, which, and where his voice resonates in his mouth and where he pitches stuff and how he sits on consonants yeah. and it's just a beautiful thing it's such theater yeah. that that dissecting it and getting into it uh and then watching to be honest you have to watch what martin landau did because he also had to do the same process because he was also doing bella not as dracula right so he was breaking it down to Jeez. to the minutia of it but but like just the eyes and the you know like when to squint when to not squint. I even got into a fight with uh, not a fight. But that's just a better story. I got into a <laughs> fist fight. I broke his jaw. No, uh, I got into a, I got into a fight with one of the um, not a fight. Uh, I was talking to the makeup guys yeah. while they were fitting me for my fangs. Right, and I was like, Bella never wore fangs, never once. Oh wow, wore fangs, and. Uh, and they're like, yeah, shut up. And then, uh, <laughs> so that was the, that was the extent of the fight. I embellished, right. but it was like, you know, technically speaking, um, right. yeah. <laughs> um, um, actually, so he just he would just go like this, right? Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Oh, and he would come at the camera, and it was, and th that was the extent of it. And then they would they would thirties light his eyes, yeah, like the stripe of thirties. I did love that when they do me. that. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, and I mean, well, I we'll we'll, get we'll talk about it when we get in the episode. But there's all sorts of that kind of fun flavor. The whole episode is about trying to capture those uh, those moments. Yeah, and things yeah, like that. yeah. the slow creeping towards things. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love. Uh, uh, let's let's start talking about the episode because there's so much okay. to talk about. Um, <laughs> so okay. this episode aired October sixteenth, two thousand. My birthday. Oh my God! Was oh, it really? Wow! I was literally, literally my fortieth birthday. It aired. Holy wow. shit! Wow! So I shot it when I was thirty-nine. Yeah. Oh my God! So the uh, birthday party was everybody come over. We're watching Supernatural. <laughs> Technically, no, we we weren't because it was my fortieth. So I threw a Peter Pan birthday party. Sure. And everybody had to dress like things from Peter Pan. Right. Oh my God! Because it fun. was the the theme of the birthday was uh, second star from the right straight on to forty. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> that was cute. a good one. It was a good That's one. Fun. I know what I want to do for 40 now. Oh, my God. There you go. Right? It was fun. Um, this episode was written by Ben Edlund, mm -hmm. the amazing Ben Edlund, and directed by Robert Goodbye, Singer. Rob Singer. Yeah. Mm. Holy shit. Uh, it's, yeah. God, I love Singer so much. Um, yeah. This episode was viewed by an estimated 3.06 million viewers. Still holding in the threes. Yeah. Eh? Which is crazy. I mean, if you think about it now, too. I mean, yeah. get where shows are at now. Like, <laughs> three is incredible. I don't but, think we ever got a million on 12 Monkeys. Is that and that, crazy? That for four seasons. Yeah, exactly. Like I was, I was doing research for this episode, and I found a bunch of articles that were like, "Ooh, I don't know if Supernatural is going to make it." Like, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, the oh, bar, the bar just keeps hit, right? Lowering. Yeah, incredible. So. Um, and uh, we watched the promos for this episode, and it was really interesting because for the first three seasons, they really couldn't figure it was like the marketing team never watched the show yeah. and so it was all like trying to play like just spooky and they didn't understand the humor or the charm of the show at all yeah. but it feels like they did for this one yeah there's one promo that looks like it was done in the old style where they don't get it and yeah. then there's one promo that really leans into like the celebration of like classic monster movies yeah. and things like that so it does kind of feel like season four they're Either someone has started watching yeah. the show or someone has realized what the promos were and totally. someone is talking to someone else. I mean, they're yeah. obviously still trying to like trade yeah. on that Buffy audience. Yeah, totally. Um, it, it, 
in, in or those earlier seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so international titles, everybody got it. Like, everyone got every, it. Monster movies, I think it's a pretty be, uh, easy concept, and it's a thing that's been around for a really long time. Uh, featuring music from this episode uh, was Bach. Uh, oh, God, I'm going to mess this up. Uh, Toccata and Fugue in D minor. Yep. You, you did it. You did it. Fucking, bum, 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 bum. Yeah. So good. I love that yeah. so much. Um, TV Guide describes this episode as several murders occur during an Oktoberfest celebration, and it's learned a uh, shape shifting demon is responsible, and that it is taking the form of iconic movie monsters such as a vampire, werewolf, Spoilers. and a mummy. <laughs> and the episode is presented in black and white. Good old TV and Guide. They will kill him at the end. Yeah. And like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Good they Lord. They just, I mean, look, that isn't TV Guide. That was that. That's uh, the PR department sending that out. Oh, is that really how that works? Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 they don't get yeah. to describe their own stuff oh my uh, because God. they haven't seen it. They have yeah. to get the information from. That's true. It would be way funnier if the TV CW. Guide was making it up <laughs> and they were just like, I think this will happen. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, General Zuvio. Like we just assume he's going to be this great thing yeah. uh, mm-hmm. ultimately. Uh, but no. Yeah. Yeah, they they, they have they only get all they're, they're told what to print. That's hilarious. I yeah, that makes total the, sense. Those but. TV guide descriptions that we read week after week are always spoilers. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like it's like and then in the third act, yeah. It's, it's, Here, let me <laughs> chew your food for you. So yeah. funny. Open um, your mouth. <laughs> uh, uh, before we actually get into today's episode, I uh, let's open up Dad's journal and learn about some of the real world lore. This is a fun one. Let's see what the lore says about Universal Classic Monsters. Holy shit! You know, we, this is this is like the third time I think on the show that we've had a shapeshifter on. Yeah, we've seen the show's version of vampires, vampires and werewolves, and things like that. But so never far. a mummy. Not a mummy. Yeah, but. Because, but a few this episode, because this episode is about specifically <laughs> these classic movies, I thought, why don't we talk about the lore this episode is yeah. based on? So uh, the Universal Classic Monsters thing is sort of like a retroactive title given to a stable of horror movies from the 30s to the 50s, basically. Did you watch any of those, Todd, like uh, uh, like prior to this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, when we grew up, we had uh, we had, and he's still going. Uh, at the time, he was called Son of Sven Gulli, and now he's called Sven Gulli. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rich Coase is his name. He's Chicago uh, uh, horror show host. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. And uh, we would just, you know, be on the carpet, the orange shag carpet, with our bowl of popcorn, <laughs> watching Son of Sven Gulli show Attack of the Mushroom People and Creature from Black Lagoon, and yeah. Oh, yeah. that's fucking There's rad. All, all sorts of classic ones. Uh, the, the, the main kind of stable includes Dracula, uh, played by Bella Lugosi, uh, Frankenstein's Monsters, Boris Karloff, uh, The Mummy, which is also Karloff, I think. Is it really both? The Invisible yeah. Man was uh, Claude Rains. Uh, Wolfman was also Lon Chaney Jr. Wow. Uh, Karloff Creature from the played Black Claude Rains. Yeah. Really? Wow. I, did, I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, so the films, each of the films, uh, is iconic in their own right. And they had their own franchises and that. But if you look at the whole thing as a ensemble, there's like over 40 films in 25 years. Yeah. It's like a Ridiculous. massive, that, that was massive their stock and trade. And there's that like studio mach- system. It's machine like comic from books, the, yeah. that era. They were Marvel movies of their time. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So these films were, uh, they kind of owe a little bit of their success yeah. or at least the idea for them from some like kind of proto monster movies that came like just the decade before things like the man who laughs or the original phantom of the opera with lon cheney um yeah uh, things like that that were kind of like these like very early days horror films. Which thing that comic yeah. books like take from now. Like 100%. The, the, the I mean, Man the, Who Laughs is the like man a Joker. Who laughs the is Joker, the yeah. inspiration for the Joker. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, it kind of comes from those things. Uh, some of these movies Hunchback. were based. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hunchback. That's the other big one. That's right. Yeah. Um, some of these mo- movies were based on classic literature yeah like hunchback or like bram stoker's dracula or like mary shelley's frankenstein and then other ones were like original ideas like the mummy and imatep and stuff like that that was kind of just like uh that was an original story but loosely based on the sort of like cultural fascination with tutankhamen's tomb and the idea that it might be cursed and all those kind of things yeah so there's kind of like a 
there's an interesting blend of like and also once you get beyond kind of some of the first ones they're all kind of like well we're riffing on this by the time you get to like son of frankenstein bride of frankenstein like we're, we're well, costello meets frankenstein <laughs> yeah, <but in> costello, <laughs> yeah we're like well past what mary shelley wrote <laughs> you know what i mean so it, they kind of you're well past it if you if you watch the movie <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, like, that's, true. <laughs> that's true too um, <laughs> it's a far cry from uh, the articulate adam from her books yeah it's true it's yeah. it's interesting because these things you know um now when we see adaptations and people go like we want to be really faithful to the book and they they always have to clarify that because these monster movies became so iconic that they kind of shaped the way we saw a bunch of these yep. monsters and so like you know when we talk about you know vampire lore or what supernatural is doing, like supernatural had to do something different with vampires and they were like here's the rules for our vampires it's because that the image of Bella Face Lugosi sparkle. and all that stuff yeah. that just like <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's stuck in the it's stuck in your mind. So Lugosi played Dracula on Broadway, as mentioned, uh, in the 20s before he was being uh, before he was cast in the film. Um, he kind of like he eventually got kind of typecast partly because of his accent and that he was like always like the villain and a monster and that and like. He always, I think he even lost out on like top billing to people like Boris Karloff, even if Lugosi was the bigger role. And shit really? like that. And I think Lugosi was like a charter member of the Screen Actors Guild and it stuff like that. It was the like accent. That. Like, yeah, Definitely. it was the accent. Yeah. And so, you know, by the, by the end, of, he, he, you know, suffered from drug addiction and stuff like that. By the end of his career, he was working with Ed Wood. His last Ooh. posthumous movie is Plan 9 from Outer Space for part of it. And then the rest of it is a guy holding a cape over his face so you can't and tell. he was it's, like a lighting guy or like he was like the, oh, wow. the accountant and they were something and they weren't the same height or anything <laughs> no like, same hair <laughs> nothing nothing he just holds a cape over his face oh like, the strings <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, that's oh. my favorite tim burton film by the way oh, really? oh yeah ed wood yeah it's a great one. Hands, uh, hands down um so boris karloff before he made it in film, he performed a lot of manual labor, actually a lot of it in Canada, working for the BC Electric Railway Company. Yeah. Yeah. We put him to work. Where are you guys located? We're in the Yukon. We're in, in White Horse, Yukon. Where's that? <laughs> like that's just... way north Vancouver. Way... So keep going yeah. up until you're out of BC into the Yukon. Yeah. We're, we're love it. Neighbors, to Alaska. neighbors to Alaska. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Claude Rains, uh, you may also know as Captain Renault in Casablanca. Mm -hmm. Yes. Big, big, big role of his. At any rate, all of these franchises had like multiple sequels and spinoffs. A lot of them had like, you see, they didn't have the conception of like the mega franchise or the cinematic universe yeah. or things at the time. But a lot of those elements are in there, even from adopting similar naming techniques for sequels where you'd have like son of bride of return, return of, of yeah. those kind of things across the different monster franchises united them a bit. You would also yep. have eventually the different monsters, if not appearing together, appearing in the same movie like the Abbott, Co Abbott Costello. Uh, uh, there's three Abbott and Costello movies, I think. I think Lugosi played Frankenstein in that. Yeah, yeah. And and so you start seeing them show up there in these kind of different contexts. In a weird way, it's like they they didn't know they did it, and everyone forgot they did it. And then later, we were like, hey, a cinematic universe. And it was a totally different version. It's not sure. what we have now, but there's kind of like a, there's an interesting like foundation of how to tie yeah. these different things together that kind of starts yeah. in those universes. Somehow movies. Stanley yeah. is still in those though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of Stanley yes, cameos. Oddly, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oddly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True vampires. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's I one ordered the steak. <laughs> It's one of like the the most prolific film franchises of fr film franchises of all time. That Dracula voice we think of is like successive iterations of people bastardizing Lugosi's real accent. Like the way we think of some of these monsters is based on these movies. Frankenstein as a shambling mess instead of being like articulate, articulate and yeah. philosophical and yeah. shit like that, like he is in the book. Um, like he is in Petty Dreadful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know they there have been and I Frankenstein there have been interesting monster 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there have been interesting monster movies since, yeah. including like Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula, yeah. including like the Brendan Fraser mummy, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But they've n- it's the Del Toro it's, Wolfman. Del Toro it's Wolfman not a bad film. Really good. But every time they've tried to consciously make kind of a monster universe instead of just making monster movies that might connect, it's always been a, the a closest failure. we've gotten is Alien versus Predator. Uh, yeah, and that that's when you're going, hey, we see connectivity here, and let's run with that. Because that Dracula Untold was trying to set something up. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously and then the Tom the Cruise's Tom Cruise mummy. mummy, they bring in uh, Doctor Jekyll in that and stuff like that. They're they're trying to do those things, and it's so funny to look back and go like they were just making movies, and then someone would be like, "Hey, what if these two were in a movie together?" Well, like, yeah, fine, it's a movie, and it, they kind of it, it was just so organic, and it be, it's I think it, that's part of why it has so much character. Well, honest, and why people love it. It's a money grab, but also yes. it was just like <laughs> yes. they're not being precious about it either you know and i think that's part of it is the construction of those universes feels like we need to be so careful different than now so yeah totally i mean i think there's probably a way to do it they just haven't cracked that nut yet yeah 100 percent. but it's also maybe just like dc where it's like maybe you don't need to maybe you can just let them be separate things well it's also part of the charm i think of those films is the old timing. that's why i kind of dug about the uh dug about the del toro Wolfman is is like it's set it in Victorian England and like part of that charm. Although the original Wolfman is like, when is that? Where, where are they? Yeah. It's like pseudo England, Slovakia, nineteen fifties. <laughs> that no, they're all dressed like peasants and drive carts. Like it's so vague. Yeah, it's true. But it's just like oh, you're asking the wrong questions. When's he turn into a wolf? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's it. That is something I really, really love about, like, especially like in the six fifties to like seventies, where it's like if it's Europe, it's basically the Middle Ages. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, especially if you're like, be like the Eastern Bloc. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ho ho ho, ladies and gentlemen! The holidays came early here at Manscaped, just like me. Wow. Yeah. We're, yeah. And Dean. <laughs> No, he's not going to come early. Oh, all right. Well, tell me about Manscaped. (laughs) The leading men's hygiene brand, Manscaped, just launched new products, including their all-new ultra-premium body wash and two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's time to give yourself, or someone who needs it, don't look at me like that, um, the gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. Go to manscaped.com and use the code SPN20 for 20% off plus free shipping. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas and and ladies. Yeah. yeah. It's, listen those, up. Get those balls up against the walls where we can see them. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past, and it's possible you have Santa's beard in your pants or your partner's pants. Yeah. Or, or the full moon is out. Wait, what? Werewolf. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> One of the two options. You're either... <laughs> You either need to trim or you're a werewolf. There's nothing you can do about it. That's it. it. Those are the only options. It's time to leave your significant other some cookies and milk at the bottom of your chimney. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. Inside the Performance Package 4.0, you'll find a signature lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer has a proprietary advanced skin safe technology to reduce cuts on your nuts. That is a thing that I 100% have done so many times in the past. I, I've, like, PTSD yeah. about using razors near that area. Well, yeah, and that's dangerous because, like, I'm a Rougarou, so if you <sighs> nick your nuts, like, I might just lose control. Yeah, especially if you see the spiced meat. <laughs> yeah. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower, which I did not know, which is amazing. Yeah, pretty cool. I, yeah, I'm going to try that with all of my technology now, just to see, because I didn't know about this You're one. You're going to try and see if all technology is waterproof? Yeah, yeah, because okay. I, I did this one surprised me, so I figure all of them are probably now. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 also includes the, pr- the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant, moisturizer, and toner. It's time to keep your North Pole feeling and smelling fresh nice the hygiene bundle will also come with a pair of manscaped anti-chafing boxers that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day 
perfect package for your perfect package. That's right. Got to get one of those. Got a perfect package for you right here. I need to get one. I don't. I, I have a perfect package and no perfect package for oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Manscaped is going beyond the groin with their ultra premium body wash. It's infused with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. They also launched their new 2-in-1 shampoo and conditioner, which has key ingredients with benefits that include hydrating, nourishing, conditioning the scalp, plus strengthening your hair at the same time. Tis the season to load up on Manscaped products. So get yourself, your dad, your brother, and your friends the best gift of all. Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. That's right. Your dad's going to crawl out of hell to get this Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. And what is a good son, but not one that is concerned about their father's genitals? Right? I, f- I follow orders, including <laughs> oh, no. ordering oh. this oh. performance package Okay, I'm 4. glad you, you turned that around because that was a really bad start. <laughs> get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SPN20 at Manscaped.com. Every guy out there needs to add Manscaped to their wish list this season. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SPN20 at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com and use the code SPN20. Clean your nuts and make Santa or your dad, who's back from hell, proud this year. He was never proud of me in life, but now that my balls are clean. That was the whole issue. Yeah. Oh, why does... Finally, my unfinished business. Whoa! Amazing. So, uh, there you go. Monster movies, which means we are heading into the monster movie of this episode. Let's I, get into it. I love how this episode starts. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, like the, no the other. Entire title sequence, like a classic uh, movie, even the score. Title cards. Yeah. Oh. I, oh, God. I just, I love all of that. It's yeah. the, the old kind of looking Warner Brothers logo uh yeah. don't even do it then and now it's no just, they don't they go right, you into go the right in it's I mean, like I think this is why i still get asked to be a part of these things is because this thing was such an anomaly in supernatural franchise yeah that that, that it, it stands out even like you said 13 years later yeah i mean it's a thing that the show manages to strike a crazy balance where it's like if you did this too much you become the gimmick show or something yeah. you become moonlighting yeah. Yeah, but they like Supernatural is somewhat known for its meta elements, but they do a good job of being like eh, one, maybe two a year, kind of like holding themselves back. And when you're doing 22 episodes, you can sneak one here and and you are going to that well, like got to write another episode, got to write another episode. We got to fill 22 for 15 years. All right, (laughs) let's be weird today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But I do love it because we come off of a couple of pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah. I say straightforward. There was time travel and stuff, but pretty regular episodes of like solve the problem. Who's the monster, monster of the week? Kind of yeah. Thing. Week, no. And so, yeah, what a fun way to start this. Totally. Part. And so Dean and Sam are driving into Pennsylvania to investigate a vampire murder. What's great is even as they're driving in, there's a sign for Pennsylvania and the lightning hits it and it changes to Transylvania and then back. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking love that. Yeah. Right. Um, Sam, Sam's kind of distracted at this point because of, you know, the fact that they figured out the world is going to end. And that God doesn't like what he's been doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but Dean's happy to be working on an old school. And what he's, I love that he says black and white episode, yeah. like a black and white monster uh, hunt. Which yeah. Is, I love that because that really just pulls you right into. Winky, wink, wink, wink. Yeah. Totally. So good. You um, should say off the top, this yeah. entire episode's in black and white. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, it, it's such a beautiful episode. I, I from a production perspective, did they did they was shoot, that taken into did, consideration? Did they shoot yeah. it the way they would shoot black and white, where like you aren't actually wearing red, you're wearing a certain kind of brown. I had like, to those act kind of in black and white. <laughs> um, <laughs> they uh, no, it was all color. Right, like my my cravat was like red and oh, yeah. it was yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It was it was in full color because they would have shot it and. In the 30s, they yeah. would have just fully costumed it. That's so interesting. Went, Oops, our, we, our film can't process that. <laughs> that I'm fair enough. Yeah, I true. love that. Um, so they they find themselves at Oktoberfest. Yeah, which it's a funny. I mean, it's it works because it's they're both like 
obviously October, sort of spooky Halloweeny kind of things, and Oktoberfest. But it is like a funny mix of energies because they come into this town where people are like celebrating and like yeah, like drinking and stuff. And then they also it's have just also give a great murders. excuse to have a medieval town in the middle of America. Yeah, 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 and and or European. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It gives you the opportunity Cobble to be a stones bit- and. It, all lights, of the stuff yeah. adds up really easy. It actually makes a ton of that sense. That was a real location. There was like a, like they didn't build those sets. It was a thing in Vancouver that was like this, like beer garden. Just like it was this, yeah. this actual like little amusement park that is converted that they just used. It was already built. Yeah, yeah they've used it for a few other shows, I think. And okay. but the, we, the Supernatural was the first to get it. I got to say, as someone that grew up. In a town with the second oh, right. largest Oktoberfest in the world, um, all of this was very authentic to me. The, yeah, that's great. The, the not just that people were dressed as the stuff, but like the way that the types of people that were at the bar. I was like, yeah, you'd be at Oktoberfest. I really, like, I know, who, I know these people. <laughs> I'm related to them. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what uh, when the camera reveals the banner advertising Oktoberfest, it lists. Happy Schnapps Combo as entertainment. The Happy Schnapps Combo is a polka rock band hailing from Manitowoc, Wisconsin, whose beer-fueled muse- musical mayhem has blown the foam off many an Oktoberfest. Interesting. Yeah, which is really fun. I like that they pulled blown that piece in. the foam. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I, I grabbed that off of somewhere else, but yes, I did like, I did like the wording. Um, they, after buying some pretzels and admiring some of the local women, uh, they Classic spot... Theme. Uh, Sheriff Dietrich, a German name, which I yeah. like, uh, uh, and approach him, posing as FBI agents Angus and Young. Yeah. Uh, of course, a- ACDC. ACDC. That's right. Um, he takes them to the morgues and, uh, and shows them the murder victim, um, Marissa Wright, who is uh, notable, uh, notably uh, not a mangled mess. They have become accustomed to from a vampire victim, yeah. right? They're expecting to see what they know as a it's, vampire. You know, victim. we've established supernatural vampires have a ton of teeth. Yeah. In addition to regular human teeth. Yeah. And ex- they, they turn her head over. She just has the two puncture marks. And it's a, such a fun moment to have them go like, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. That's not how vampires <laughs> work. Um, they go to the Bavarian Beer House Tavern to find Ed and talk to the waitress, Jamie, who directs them to Ed. Uh, yeah. Sam and Dean are compared to Agents Muller and Scully of the X-Files. Uh, Kim Manners, who unfortunately, his last episode ever directing was the previous episode that we uh, we right. talked about, uh, unfortunately died uh, uh, not too long after that. Oh, um, but he's produced both of them. The X-Files also had a black and white episode, which is called the postmodern Prometheus from 1997, where the monster was obsessed with a monster movie. There you go. So it's fun connection uh, there. Um, they find this guy, Ed, he's drinking a big beer and, and, and they ask him for details. Ed Brewer... Michael Eklund, I fucking love this guy. This actor, I feel like I've seen him in lots of stuff. Yeah, he's in so much stuff. I I really like him in Mr. Right, but I mean the guy's oh, the guy's yeah. in t- so many movies. I I, really I liked him in Ethan Hawke. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks have, exactly like he Ethan Hawke. He he's got he's got some Ethan Hawke vibes, and he's got some David Arquette vibes. Yes. Uh, well, I was like watching- if those two made sweet sweet love and made an unnatural <laughs> baby. Which I would love to sketch. I'd like to sketch that event. I've got ideas. <laughs> anyway, we'll workshop it after. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I I, I really uh-huh. love to see some of those initial sketches That's for amazing. sure. But the uh, what's some hawk on our connection. <laughs> Finally, the, the people have been asking for it. They have the people have spoken. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. This guy's like he's in uh, Van Helsing, uh, also a vampire. That's thing. right. That was uh, yeah another kind of attempt to make a monster universe kind of movie because Frankenstein's monster is also in that movie. Yeah. As well as there being Dracula and Van Helsing, he's got that weird nervous hawk energy too. Yeah. So that's yep. true. Um, so, but he's reluctant to talk to anybody uh, because he's already a laughing stock at this point, and nobody believes that uh, vampires are a thing, and that he's ridiculous for making yeah. these notions. He finally explains that he was walking through the park when he spotted what he initially thought was a couple kissing until the woman started struggling. His description of the man uh, is a perfect match for a movie version of Dracula, <laughs> yeah. complete with Transylvanian accent, which he demonstrates for them. I like that, and I also like he's like it's. 
it's a Dracula, you know, slicked back hair, yeah. cape, medallion. <laughs> like, it's like everybody knows this. <laughs> It's a Dracula. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny. I like so also funny. that you refer to a, it as a, a Dracula. Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Dracula. Obviously. Look it up, is a Dracula. It <laughs> is a fun way on the show to do a shorthand version of if we say vampire, we mean ours. Yes. If we say a Dracula, we're talking about whoa. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah. Jamie talks uh, with another waitress, Lucy, who dubs her lipstick on a napkin and moves off. Dean and Sam go back to the bar and uh, and Sam notices the napkin. Dean tells Sam, so what we've got, so we got a vampire, a werewolf monster mashing in this town. He's referring to the graveyard smash hit Monster Mash by Bobby Boris Pickett and the Crypt, uh, Crypt Kickers from 1962. Mm-hmm. Dean figures that the vampire is an imposter who just wants to hang out at Oktoberfest. He asks Jamie for a date and then informs Sam that he's come back from hell. So he's completely restored and wants to get rid of his restored virginity. Jesus. <laughs> I love this. He's See, been rehymenated. I, I, yeah, I love yeah. I love Dean logic. Yeah. yeah. Um after talking about regaining his virginity, Dean mentions that the dude does not abide, which is a reference to the cult movie The Big Lebowski. That's right. Um Sam goes back to the hotel and Dean tells Jamie that the case isn't weird enough for them to stick around. Uh, The couple uh, are making out on Lover's Lane while a howl happens. So they basically switch to this new scene of like, oh God, it's such a beautiful shot too, but it's this like couple sitting in a car making out. Now, I I suspect I already know the answer to this, but... Did you also get to be like the wolf hands <laughs> grabbing this I wasn't guy out the of the mummy. Car. I wasn't the wolf. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't the waitress. No? Yeah. Or the bartender. No, I wasn't all of those things. Oh, I've got I to thought... get rid of all my notes praising your performances, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> I crushed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, suddenly there's a you get those like classic wolf hand hands, like just the hands moving slowly. I love that. Uh, this, this is such a good conceit. Like that as a shapeshifter, the kind of thing you are turning into looks like shitty gloves <laughs> like that. Oh, I love that. It's so good. Um, And uh, he rips the guy out of the car yeah. and just fucking like, just like it, what's what, one of the things that I love is like in these classic monster movies, it's like people don't get actually eaten. It's a thing that the show also, loves to do. The show does. Power. Yes. Yeah. I, and then I, we cut away. Yeah. I like how. Uh, the show also doesn't make you feel bad for this guy at all because yeah. moments before uh, he's uh, ripped apart, he he goes like, "No, like, oh if it, yeah, if like this backs up, if it doesn't get out, it causes medical problems." You're like, all right, buddy, like <laughs> kill the douche. Yeah, fuck that guy. And then, like, and in the next scene too, where they're like talking to the girlfriend or whatever. Yeah, like she's kind of shaken but also you could tell she's like well he's gone she's just drinking a drink guys she just doesn't even care um they uh they she confirms that a classic movie werewolf killed her boyfriend because yeah. again there's another moment where they're like so what did he look like you know like a werewolf with the nose and the snout like <laughs> so well, and then the cop also says like we just got this back from the crime scene it's dog hair yeah it's like <laughs> Um, so they go to the morgue and examine Rick's body, concluding that the murder was supernatural. However, the killer didn't remove the heart, which right. is a classic supernatural werewolf thing. That's right. Uh, indicating that it's not a werewolf that they've ever fought before. Dietrich reveals that they found wolf hairs on the body. And they head back to the bar to discuss the fact with the werewolves that don't actually have wolf hair. Jamie comes over and agrees to go on a date with Dean that night. That's right. Uh, at the now we cut to the museum the, yeah. uh, which is really cool because we get the security guard who's uh, who's basically talking to somebody who's just like w- like where did this where did it's, this mummy come from it's such a funny conceit where that he he's like no they dropped it off no shipping list no anything so it's like not only I love the idea that not only is this character that eventually we get to see Todd play yes. but not only is this character obsessed with monster movies and is shape-shifting themselves to look like a monster like, he's also inside like of a box buying a sarcophagus and having it shipped to a yeah. museum and waiting yeah. and like <laughs> I, I love the commitment yeah. like he put himself <laughs> in it yeah so yeah. Funny. like, like the, the logic it? falls apart like sugar <laughs> and rain but it's still awesome it's 
Um, like, don't think about it, mummy. But you know, like we we we'll we'll get to it. But like, there's there's some like kind of humanizing moments for this monster later on. And you kind of go like, I Huge. I could I totally buy this amount of effort. Yeah, based on what info were provided about this later, character. Yeah, he was yeah. beaten with his. F- anyway, yeah, we'll get there. Yes. Yeah. Um. What's interesting is that no, uh, uh this Todd uh, did not. Uh, 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 act as the mummy, no. but a different Todd did play the security <gasps> guard. It was actually Jensen Ackles' stunt double that played oh. the the security guard, Todd Scott. That's fun. Yeah. Um, See, look at that. See, there's Todds in there. Todds roll the day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> as uh, as he calls for uh, confirmation, a mummy emerges from the sarcophagus. The security guard asks if Helen might have any record of the delivery of the mummy helen is the name of the female lead in the original mummy from 1932 starring boris karloff so we're pulling some names from those of the classic movies there the guard guard's gun proves useless and the mummy strangles him which we know guns don't really work that well with uh shapeshifters too so it's actually not that crazy yeah, we can see that's right oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait hold on there's a we, the bullets weren't civil it's fine um uh, Fair. Uh, the brothers go to the museum after the police secure the scene and discover the sarcophagus is from a prop house. And the mummy used dry ice for its smoke. So it is also like it, it's it's not magic. Like it is using well, like, and prop it's kind shit. of why the guys are, are like, this is just like a human killer. Yes. <laughs> like this is this is not our kind of case. So funny. It's gruesome and we should investigate it, but it's not um, but it is or a monster. Someone should. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like it is and isn't a monster that they're used to. It's a, it's very funny. So Dean leaves Sam to check uh, uh check it out and goes to meet Jamie. Now, Jamie has been waiting for Dean and uh, uh decides she she can't wait any longer and she's going to leave. Yeah. She starts walking down the street. I fucking love this. So it, what a great reveal. What a great entrance. Just the like, the like, she just turns around and, and there's Todd just like, boom, right there. And <laughs> so good. <laughs> such an incredible, I, I mean, it, one, it's such beautiful cinematography. Surge is incredible. I, I, I never can say that enough. Like his, uh, like all of his cinematography is really incredible, but just the reveal. But then Todd does the swoop of the arm and then what does the walk that like, Oh, it's it is it is great. It's so much a part of the the vibe of the episode is tr- to put you back in those kind of thirties movies. So yeah, I I mean I love everything that happens in in this scene. Sure, but like the yeah the the cape over the face and then the like shuffle towards how her. how much of this would you say was the stuff you worked on beforehand and that you knew you were going to bring versus you know the setup of the shot and yeah. what they wanted you to do on the on well, it the was, day. that that was actually my first day of shooting i mm-hmm. believe like literally that was my first scene so right. it's it's often uh an interesting moment uh for a, a, an actor or a guest star even more um because that's where you're, you're you're sort of planting your flag and going this is what i plan on doing right yeah. <laughs> so you're either going to adjust it from here forward or you're going to be like, keep doing it. Right. Uh, I often am lucky to say that I get keep doing it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's also the kinds of roles that I get cast in. So sure. uh, I just kind of went for it because just understanding as we get to understanding who this guy is later yeah. down the road, that's what he would do. He would yeah. not, It. it's not just cosplay. It's, it's it's LARPing. I mean, yeah, yeah. He's he's live action role playing, and yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he would lean hard, uh, and technically speaking, he has physically shaped himself into Bella Lugosi. So ideally, his vocal cords even yeah. are shaped like like so the the ability to just do it, and then he would want the moment to be from the film he wants yeah. to be in the film mm-hmm. and then once they get the low-lying fog and the cobblestones and the gas lights it was heavenly like sure it was like uh, that's what i that's what was expected of me that's why i was hired yeah. so on day one i just i just brought that i fucking love that yeah that's yeah. awesome because i think it's yeah. even in this scene in this sequence that we get the yep 
that that like, thirties lighting, right, right yeah. on the eyes. Yeah. I fucking love yeah. that. Yeah, because he corners her in a in a dead end alley and refers to her as the reincarnated uh, reincarnation of his beloved yeah. Mina. Mina, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So good. Ooh. Oh God, God, after all these years. Still got it. <laughs> um, sh- yeah, that's hard. <laughs> How I ever got back to doing that. Man, I was late. <laughs> fucking love that yeah I, yeah i even in some of the interviews that i had read uh with you at the time yeah you you i mean you talked about it at the beginning of this episode but like going back and like continuing to watch youtube videos like in between make sure that you never like strayed from that performance you know that's well that was my job right like totally. that's that's why i was hired was to do that and then the audition actually was both do that and then do the monologue which oh, yeah. they didn't want the accent for yeah, right. well, we'll get there. It's really interesting that yeah. switch, but she, but there's also breaks in it as well. There are some interesting moments, like of right that, here yeah. when she sprays him with pepper spray. Oh, Christ! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. Just throwing a little Chris Farley there in that so moment. So good, yeah. um, son of a. <laughs> <laughs> and runs past him and into Dean. Dean is unimpressed, punches Dracula, but I love the the quick flip back up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so fucking rad. Um, but the vamp, yeah. The, and then fucking Todd overwhelms him. There was a thing that I had seen in one of the interviews where you're basically like pinning him against the thing and you just like kept breaking into the laughter because it was like such a ridiculous thing. No, well, what the, the story is, yeah. uh, and I have to do a nod to Michael Keaton. The story is I have, I have uh, Jensen up against the wall and it's just absurd. And I lean <laughs> up to him and, I, and I'm about, I'm like, I have fangs and I'm about to bite, bite his neck. And I go, we're both grown men. <laughs> and so, like, we're in a cobblestone street, and, that, and it's, it, it literally came from a moment of, uh, and, 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 and Jensen busted too, because it's just absurd. Like, what we do is absurd. What we do for a living is absurd. Yeah. And I guess there's, there's this, whether it's apocryphal or not, there's a moment where in the shooting of Batman, Keaton has Jack Nicholson up again, like this, and yeah. he says, we're both grown men. Oh, wow. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm dressed as a bat. You're dressed as this. Like, what are we doing with our lives? That's there are so people funny. that jump into forest fires from airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> this is how I'm spending my day. I fucking love that. It's, it's so incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's, the, that's what happened. Oh, it's, I love one that. One of my favorite moments. And also was the day I was, I mean, I had met him in the, the trailer. Mm-hmm. But the other thing that you're trying to set is, here's how I'm going to play, guys. Like, uh, like between action and cut, I'm also this guy. Yeah. So I do not, I take the job seriously and my research and my performance, but I don't, I'm not methody. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I want to have, the, if, if I'm away from my family for these big chunks of time, I want to have a great time. Yeah. And so I was just letting like, you, you let people know, like I, I'm going to joke around. This is yeah. how I am. And I hope it doesn't interfere with your process, but yeah. this is silliness that what we're doing is absolute silliness. When I think I've heard a bit that you, you are sometimes a bit pranky on set sometimes too, and like have lots of fun. Pranky. I'm not pranky. It must be difficult uh, to be I, pranky. I, I am joking. Yes, Yes. yes. I'm jokey. I'm not like, mm, I'm putting, I, you know, I'm, I'm putting yeah. itching powder in your slippers. <laughs> like, no, I'm not like, whoopee cushion. No, <laughs> I'm not pranky. Yeah, yeah. I am, I am, but I, I do like to, uh, I do like to uh, just enjoy myself, and I'm yeah. an improv boy from Chicago, and mm-hmm. so I just love I love the bits, I love the laughing and the bits, yeah. which is and very in just, line with that set too. Yeah, I think. everything keeps, that we, yeah, we've keeps things heard buoyant. or read or other people that have worked on that set, it, it does feel like that is a good match. You know, it feels like Supernatural is that. Kind well, of- you find out quick. Yeah, you know, I bet. like if, if people are like, yeah, that's, I mean, I've worked with actors that are just be like, huh. I don't know. <laughs> All right, oh. then I'm not going to play with you. All right, yeah. we're not going to play. But um, but uh, you, you're setting a tone for yeah. yourself. And you're like, I want to have a good time. And what a crazy thing that we do for a living. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, so the vampire calls Dean Harker, mm-hmm. but 
Dean yanks off his ear. Yeah. <laughs> earball. Yeah. He pulls my earball off. Yeah. And his medallion. Uh, and, uh, of course, our Dracula runs away as Dean runs after him. But the vampire <laughs> climbs over a locked gate and, and drives away on a scooter. Okay, this is what I love. The hop over the fence is, like, cool. Yeah. You're like, whoa, we just got over the fence. And then immediately onto the little <laughs> scooter. <laughs> Me. Uh, I mean, I got, I, 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 uh, I was, I would practice with that scooter in the parking lot. And so that was like one o'clock in the morning. I'm tooling around, terrified that my cape is going to get pulled into the right, back tire. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Shit. I even think about that. Yeah. I think it's the, uh, the only stunt that you didn't or weren't able to do was the jump. Basically everything else you did yourself too, I right? Would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. there, there are highly paid people yep. who are there to do that and make me look awesome. So yeah, it does. It looks means. awesome as hell. Yeah, you leave it to the professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, I'm, not, which... I'm not proud. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither are we. Uh, which cuts to the intermission. Yeah, I love that little intermission card so Again, fucking right cool. before the like like sort of middle commercial break totally. that's a lot of fun um back at the bar dean shows sam the ear and tells him to touch it uh hesitantly he does and they realize that it's a shapeshifter if it's the skin of a shapeshifter it's all weird and gooey like they always are uh dean and yet they knew it was the hair of a dog yeah <laughs> Obviously. It wouldn't have been, but anyway. No. Well, see, yeah, the, see, there's a, I mean, listen, we won't get into it here, but there's an interesting question about w what exactly is being shapeshifted. Yes. Like your DNA? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Again, we're straightening a slinky here, so. Yeah, fair, fair. Yeah. Uh, Dean also shows them the medallion, which belongs to the same prop house as the fake sarcophagus. Yeah. Uh, so they make the drawing a connection to these two things. Sam figures that it, that the shapeshifter is reenacting horror movies and recognizes the name Mina and Harker as characters from the novel Dracula. Yeah. Thank goodness Sam has read a book. Yeah. <laughs> Sam. Oh, God. Sammy. J uh, J Jensen turned that name into two syllables. Sam. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. Sam. It's great. Um, there's also a character named Lucy, too, which w w isn't drawn to a conclusion there because they don't know yet. But yeah. um, all three characters references uh, reference Dram Ram Stoker's yes, Dracula. That's right. so, yeah. Yeah. Um, it must uh, it must be fixated on Jamie, they, they, they conclude, meaning he's been around her at some point or another. So Jamie, they, of course, suspect Ed our Ethan Hawke, yeah. <laughs> David Arquette, love child, because um, he's kind of a weirdo and he's always there. And earlier in the episode, Ethan they say Faux he Hawk? lives, he lives <laughs> 20, uh, $20 tips or whatever. That's right. Yeah. Ethan Faux Hawk for the win. <laughs> That's good. I'm proud of but, him. So they, and then they also find out that he works as a projectionist. They're just like, oh, the classic movies. Yeah. He's a weird dude. Must be him, right? So Sam goes to investigate while Dean explains to Jamie about the real monsters and that the fact that roam the world and that that he's not really an FBI agent and that uh, all of this res responsibility. And yeah. she goes, "That must suck. Like this has got to suck." Yeah, and he goes, "And worst of all, I got my virginity back." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dean admits it used to weigh on him until he had a near-death experience uh, and now he admits that things are a little bit different and he saves people he then says we're on a mission from God which is a famous line from the movie Blues Brothers from 1980 with Dan Aykroyd's character Elwood speaking that line yeah. um, she checks to see if that means he's celibate and he admits he, he uh, uh, it doesn't yeah. they kiss but are interrupted when Lucy comes in to get a bottle wishes them well but Jamie invites her to stay for a drink as Sam is approaching the theater. I like this scene with Sam in the in the cinema because you show up and it's, there's that kind of organ, the pipe music organ and stuff playing. And as he goes behind the screen, it, like no one else is there. It's just Ed, like in his skivvies, playing on the organ. But we get these cuts out in front, so we get the silhouettes yeah. from behind the screen, which is another such like a classic kind of horror movie thing and I, I love well it's also a nod that they're living in a movie yeah I love totally that, yeah I love that just you didn't have to have that shot like it's pretty quick like the cuts mm -hmm. to it it's you don't spend a lot of time on it but I I love the detail but I guarantee it was it. like a two hour setup yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing you never really take into consideration. Well, I know, I know. Oh, I do. Yeah, I yeah. bet. I, I bet it probably really changes the way you see TV and movies. You read right? a script and you're like, 
well, that's a long night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Anytime I see like people like in mud and, and in the rain at night, I'm like, that's the worst night of their life because people yeah. don't realize that their favorite TV shows, most of the actors are exhausted. Yeah. Because it's like four o'clock in the morning and you've been in your trailer while they're adjusting lights in the rain. Yeah. You're like, exactly. oh. I mean, it isn't coal mining, but uh, it's still taxing on the body. Yeah. Yeah. Because you also have to be ready when they need you yep and sometimes that's 40 minutes and sometimes that's and three sometimes hours. that's them waking you up from a sound sleep <laughs> yeah that's right yeah yeah was it really hard for you reed when you did that energy saving light bulb commercial <laughs> no but i do remember <laughs> do, i do remember shooting Probably. a commercial years ago that was like not that involved or whatever and it took us 12 hours it's like a 30 second commercial and i was like jesus christ <laughs> but, jesus. but it was mostly because of the setups because we were outside and they yeah. needed the proper light and then it was a windy day and they had to wait for that and there's all that kind of shit like yep yeah I kept telling you to stop eating the pro the prop food and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not even real yeah they're like this isn't even about food <laughs> Um, so uh, uh, the, uh, Sam is approaching the theater what's cool about this theater is that it's called the Goethe Theater G-O-E-T-H-E -E. uh, John Goethe yeah, Goethe but yeah I guess written Goethe because I'm I don't know what the fuck I'm doing but oh god <laughs> John Johann Wolf Wolfgang von Goethe <laughs> Johann <laughs> you're fired I know that's okay <laughs> This that person was a German writer who wrote the famous tragic play Faust, which yeah. main which the uh, the main theme of selling your soul to a demon is reiterated on this show as well. Right. So yeah. it's kind of a cool connection. Um, but yeah, Sam goes behind the curtain to take care of him and finds the he's got a small portable keyboard set up on the big desk. Like a and he's in his underwear. Yeah. So funny. Uh, I, was, I think I got I got to walk through that theater because the first day that I arrived, they wanted to introduced me to Bob Singer because I didn't meet him during the audition. Mm -hmm. I met Kripke. Right. And so uh, that's where I met Bob Singer when they were shooting that scene. So I was oh, like, that's walked awesome. into this theater and saw this gorgeous space. It was wow. fun. Oh, that's God. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like that Sam tries to rip his ear. his ear off. He's like, oh, yeah, time for it to grow back. It's not coming off. And he's like, it's not supposed, supposed to. to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, back at the bar, um, Lucy... Lucy dabs her lipstick uh, on the napkin like we saw in the beginning and talks to Dean and Jamie who starts to pass out yeah. and they realize that they've been drugged and Dean immediately figures out that it's Lucy and just fucking like, like, does he punch her or kick her? He, well, first he, da he decks her. He punches yeah. her across the booth and then he gets out and he's stumbling yeah. that I think he. I mean, if he doesn't kick her, he grabs a bottle and breaks it. Yeah. And he says, I'll skin you myself and then passes out. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, and she it's just a good moment. I, you know, I, I like. It's funny in an episode like this to see a thing that, in any context, is supposed to be really scary. If that's yeah. a James Bond movie and he gets poisoned and he's not gonna, you're like, ah, oh, shit, no, James Bond. But in this one, it's they know that it's kind of funny, yeah. and so like the way he falls with the bottle, like there's kind of a Pratt folly thing to it, exactly. Yeah. But he wakes up. Air of the episode. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, he wakes up clad in laser later hosen. Yep. <laughs> With so much effort. Look so great. much effort that Todd went to to undress and redress <laughs> Dean. Yeah, it must have been really painful to have to undress <laughs> Jensen Ackles. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Meticulous button work. Yeah. <laughs> it's my spolin. There's my spolin for you. Fucking love it. Um, and he's bound to some sort of like metal contraption in a basement laboratory. <laughs> Looks very much like where uh, Frankenstein's monster mm -hmm. uh, is birthed, you know, the, yeah. with the straps across and the wood kind of plank. And you see kind of like the nerd like the, like, the lambs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've. Uh, the shapeshifter is, uh, is in his Dracula form now, uh, in his Todd form, uh, <laughs> and reveals that Lucy was an actress from a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, the shapeshifter believes he's Dracula and all the other characters preferring them to real life. Uh, Dean points out that every monster movie ends with the hero winning and the monster dying, but Dracula is Call confident. Pumpkin pie eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love this moment with the. 
uh, uh, you go for the the electrical like to electrocute him, and the slow, so you slow. Ah, my hero. Yeah, <laughs> I fucking love this so much because it's like, just, and then the fact that I I won't break the eye contact with yeah. him the whole time. Yeah. I want to do it. I want to do it. It was almost like a Conan bit from the nineties. Yes, yeah. do it. I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna do it. I won't do it. I I love it. Was it. So it, funny. It works so but well because of the genre. It works. Yeah. Like, in the in the thirties, that would have been scary. Yeah, but it's hilarious when you yeah. <laughs> through the context of time. Yeah, yeah, and also like again, so sincere. Yeah, that's if the you're key. someone that loves these movies. Be like, I'm not just gonna pull the fucking lever. I'm gonna <laughs> like take my time. Oh, I'm gonna savor it. Build the drama and the tension. Yes. Yeah, it's fun. Because I hear the music in my head. That's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Um, and just as he's about to grab it, the doorbell rings. Ding dong. <laughs> so good. <laughs> this is a good. This is a good little scene. It's so it's such good comedy because uh, Todd goes to answer the door and finds a puzzled pizza delivery boy uh, as he pays for the pizza, getting a discount with a coupon. Yeah, I have a coupon. <laughs> the, yeah. The the other thing I like is you know like I like how this pizza delivery guy is kind of playing the just like I got other delivery oh, man dude. and like, the garlic. Garlic. <laughs> He's like, did you like, order garlic? All that shit. No, oh, never. That's my first. That that was my first gift <laughs> that people ever did of me. Really? Which was no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it was like that's just it's, that delivery is so good. The 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 reaction to the would did you order? No, <laughs> no. Why, why would I? I? Yeah. <laughs> Hell, the thought. I, so funny. I love that so much. I just, yeah, I just and then, love And then, like, sort of the grandpa. Uh, no, I have a coupon. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Never breaking They wrote character. the hell out of that scene. Oh, and, then, and then my favorite, I think, shot is, is that, like, that sort of side walk across the hallway with the cape. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the cape of- like, no yeah. one's watching me. No. Yeah. Like, Dean's in the basement, and I'm <laughs> keeping that shit up the whole time. Oh. That's commitment. It's, it's a great He's scene. in it. He's in his suburban household. It's like this mid-century modern yeah. bungalow. <laughs> and I'm like, like, it's so Ed Wood, that moment. Well, and this is the thing that we're kind of getting to in, yeah. in the next scene too is I, this scene and the next scene are is the, it's this weird juxtaposition between there's a kind of sort of innocence and playfulness about someone reenacting and living in the movies they love but yeah. also this person is literally like ripping people to shreds he's deadly it's, he's it's deadly. horrifying this pizza delivery guy is just like oh this fucking weirdo and has no idea that like downstairs someone's about to I die have people in my basement yeah and then so like in the next scene or close to the next scene or whatever when we get down there and the whole room is set up and you know she's in the dress and everything, and Todd yeah. kind of waves his arm and goes, "We're having pizza tonight." Like, yeah, I remember, I remember them <laughs> struggling. <laughs> it's like that is my meal. Um, <laughs> I remember them struggling to get the pizza to smoke because right, they yeah. wanted it steaming. So they literally had like broken off pieces of incense. Oh. And shoved it into the pizza and lit it. So when you see that oh, shot, you wow. just see like little tendrils of smoke, smoke coming up because a pizza doesn't smoke; it steams. Yeah. yeah. And and by the time that you have a prop pizza, that thing isn't hot. There's like five of them, and they're like bring yeah. the next one in, bring the next one in. Yeah, yeah. And so they shoved bits of incense into the wow. pizza. That's amazing. To create the smoke. I I figured it was our boy Ivan Hayden doing like digital After Effects. That's crazy that they actually nope, went. No, it was legit. Jit like like I, I believe it was like incense cones. Love that. That's so that they were funny. Burning to, so next time you see it, look close. You yeah. actually see little incense cones on there. Yeah, that's oh, amazing. Because that. I also love that the pizza is like the, the, all the sliced pieces are like put on another plate and like separated just slightly. Like it's <laughs> yeah. so like ta- well taken care of. It's like yeah. he could he couldn't afford or get delivered yeah. the the caliber of meal he would want for the movie. So I'm going to treat well, yeah, this pizza with you reverence. like you want that like pig with apple in mouth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know feast that that Vlad Dracul would put yeah. out for someone. Nah, it's Domino's. 
<laughs> Fucking, <laughs> I love that so much. Um, meanwhile, uh, Sam is looking for Dean, finds yeah. the the napkin with the lipstick on it, so he immediately makes the connection that it's Lucy who's been the shapeshifter this whole time. Yeah, um, you know, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he doesn't go. Oh, the monster got them and Lucy. He go. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So he goes to uh, uh, to meet everybody at Lucy's house and slips in. Um, the shapeshifter that I love the so terrifying this woman. The moment where it's like everything switches and it becomes like this apology where it was just like, yeah. like, I never wanted to scare you. Like, you're the last person. I love this performance. The switch. That yeah. happens do, do you want to talk a little bit about about this moment? This this speech, you know, it's it's such yeah, it is, is such the, a this, this was the audition. This yeah. was part of the audition because they obviously wanted to see what that switch if they if the what what the actors would do with that. Yeah, I right. guess I should say. Um, and so it you know I, I it's in my wheelhouse to to i love the dichotomy yeah. uh you know i i one of the weirdest compliments i ever got was uh i was on a show the riches and somebody said i felt so bad for you when you were killing your father and uh <laughs> like like dude a mission accomplished and like this that. scene this scene is also i think why the show of uh, this episode is remembered because yeah. it is a sympathetic monster. You do mm-hmm. feel bad for him for uh, the modicum of, of the moment. You can, you can feel bad for him, but what makes him a villain is he's kind of unrepentant. Yeah. And so there's no, there's no journey and learning arc. He's still killing people. Yeah. Um, and he goes, maybe I kill people cause I'm lonely. Um, <laughs> but what I love about that scene is, uh, is the is the juxtaposition of I'm still fully it's not like I transformed into another f- shape right like it, it's just I'm like still in Dracula shape but you just kind of see the the abused child yeah. uh the the guy who was beaten by his father like it's heartbreaking like the yeah. the, the episode takes a decidedly dark turn yeah. in, in this moment uh and I also like the moment, and this just sort of came through the improvisation of it all, uh, where I wink at my own conceit when I when I say terrifying, yeah. but I say it as Dracula. <laughs> right. Terrifying. It's like, I, like I'm, I'm apologizing and I go, and it's kind of like, and I kind of like terrifying. You know, like, like <laughs> yeah. I'm making fun of myself. Like, I know I'm being ridiculous, but it's, I have to be yeah. because, uh, because it is my protection. It is, yeah. it is how I have now come to, uh, deal with the abuse that I suffered. It's, uh, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's, and I think the writing of that scene is just chef kiss and they, which is why I do think this, that episode has endured. Yeah, I think there's yeah, the 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 levels of that performance because you're not showing repentance but you are showing being victimized at the same time, which is like a really hard you know, thing to probably And we play. we drop the skin of the Lagosi voice until we wink at it. Like yeah. there's still even in the very kind of sincere and dark, you know, depth of that speech, there's still some charm and things mm-hmm. like like there, there's a lot of pieces in there yeah he becomes he becomes the nervous guy on a first date yeah and 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 it's really again reading that scene and just like as an actor you go oh god what what a gift like this scene is such a gift and this otherwise other gift which is be lugosi like yeah to do a stated scene chewing no pun intended uh homage yeah on a show that doesn't have this broad of performing like Mm -hmm. This is like 30 style stage style acting hitting the balcony and then doing then going in the same episode you get to be this big like it's this right. small and and show how small he is and why he puts all of this on because he feels small. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean that's one of the things that the show does so well which is I mean we'll, we'll talk about our summations after but I I I think what's it's, it must be a treat to work on this show as a guest because it's like every episode's a little bit different. You have the opportunity to do like this breadth of performance through an entire thing. It's like the show's never been afraid to do comedy and to do like serious drama. Tragedy. And, yeah. yeah. Like it, that the, scene is tragic. Yeah. 
it's the breadth of like uh, of stuff that's on there and when most shows probably would be like oh that doesn't make sense for us but the show just has shoved it in and fit it in through the whole thing yeah it walks the line really well Mm -hmm. it's got to be so hard to do that and not fuck it up like because you just you're like try to put comedy in something that's supposed to be scary it's probably so easy to turn it into a scary movie as as, well that's my my single favorite genre i think like right. Ghostbusters, Shaun of the Dead, like yeah. that's my favorite genre. Genre is scary, funny. Yeah, when you yeah. can do it right, it's. It, I mean, it, it. Yeah, it beats everything. The Evil Dead, like I, 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 you are, you are satisfying me on all levels. Amazing. Right. Um. So Sam uh, sneaks into the place. Uh. The uh. Jamie calls out for Dean as uh the shape differ hears a sound. Uh, uh he knocks her out while Sam finds Dean and frees him. They break the fake door and uh to make their escape. They find Jamie, but the shapeshifter throws Sam through a wall, calling him Ben Helsing. Yeah, love love that. <laughs> so Can't good. Uh and beats back Dean. Dean knees him in the groin <laughs> and tries to go for the gun loaded with silver bullets. The shapeshifter throws him back, but Jamie grabs the gun and shoots him. Dracula's line, it was beauty that killed the beast, is from King Kong yes. from 1933. Yeah. So good. And um, I love I love this death scene, too. So he's shot with silver bullets. Yes. Silver, obviously, on Supernatural. That's what gets your shapeshifter. I, I love this death scene, like, slowly sitting in the chair, the eyes. Milking the, like, it, milking yeah. it, milking it. And then it was a closing iris. Yeah, I that's believe. right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, when there's I, a few of those kind of classic yeah. like, wipes and transitions and that in throughout the this whole episode, episode for yeah. sure. That's the scene that I actually clocked Jensen in the face. Oh, really? really? Yeah. There's a there's a moment where we do like a, a one two three elbow like poof, 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 yeah like that. And on that take, either I leaned in or he leaned in or we both leaned in. I just clipped him. <laughs> and it's in, it's in one of the blooper reels because what's what's beautiful about it is uh, is I'm like being old Dracula. And I'm yeah. like, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. And then I clock him and then it all just drops. And I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Are you all right? And he's like, I'm like, I got you. He's like, yeah, you got me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it made the blooper real. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. Um, so there's... I injured their, their very expensive lead. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, as he dies, uh, uh, I love the line where it's perhaps this is how movies should end. Yeah, this is how my movie. The mon- yeah, this monster end. movie yeah. should end. Yeah. 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 This is how the monster yeah. movie it should end. Uh, which I, I really like that. Um, there's also a moment uh, when he's about to die, and the and during the end titles, the violin theme quotes the first four notes of Young Frankenstein's main theme. Right. Which is <sighs> a nice connection there. I mean, so like the details, like to do that, like who for who, except for the people that are making it who want to make art, right? Like. I love that. A- another shit. thing that Supernatural does so well is, yeah. you know, for the people that like this stuff, those things are in there. And for, for the people that know this stuff, rather, those things are in there. Yeah. And it means when you go back and rewatch, there's something else for you to find. Like you're, you can rewatch just because you enjoy the thing or because you appreciate it, but you're also going to see something for the first time at least a few times. Yeah. And th- there's something that I think helps, a- helps that show have kind of sustained fans and helps an episode like this stay relevant or whatever it's like oh my god i didn't even notice that that there's a line that i always like say to clients which is that it's the design isn't in the details the design is the details is the details yeah Yeah. i i love that line so much um so the next day, Dean and Jamie kiss as the brothers prepare to leave town. She thanks them for saving her life. And Sam admits it's good to be back on a job of simple monster hunting. He says he wishes life would be more like a movie. And Sam figures the movie Dean would, li- would li- like life to be is Porky's too. <laughs> Dean dismisses it as lucky as a lucky guess. Um as a final sort of note to this, uh, this was revealed as one of Jared Padalecki's favorite episodes. He says mm-hmm. that it's because of some of the classic movie monsters. It's filmed in black and white, and you get to see Jensen Ackles and later Hosen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I, you know, I've done a bunch of conventions, and that tickled the fans beyond words to see him <laughs> in later. Like it is one of the biggest things that they bring up with me. That's really? so funny. <laughs> like, I'm like, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I'm glad you like it. Yeah. 
Yeah, you you were the one that changed his clothes. <laughs> Apparently. In their fanfic, their slash fiction. Oh, I yeah. guarantee that exists. There's no way yeah. that it doesn't. Yeah. Um, as we sort of fi- finish up our episode here, uh, yep. uh, Todd, you are our guest. Uh, could you give, maybe give us a summation of your thoughts and maybe a review of uh, out of how five of however many things you want to give it? Uh, well, that, to me, it's a it was a five star thing in my life because it is it has been the gift that keeps on giving. It has introduced me to lovely folks like yourself. Uh, it, it again, it was a week. I always return to this. It was a week of my life that then just gets blasted out into a, a canon of pixels in the universe, and it just the return that just keeps it's taken me to places in the world. Like I've been brought to overseas to conventions oh, wow. for a week of my life that I spent pretending to be Bella Lugosi. So uh, <laughs> it, it literally has transformed and affected my life. Uh, uh, I continue to be in touch with Jared uh, s- since then. He's one of my favorite people. Wow. Um, you know, it, it, and to make a thing, you know, I've always been fortunate with 12 Monkeys and, and, and things to make the kinds of shows that I watch myself right. uh this was a special one this was really special and it will always be special 13 14 20 years later it will always be a special moment in my life uh and a and a and a rare thing that an actor gets to do like they trusted me with a thing and and uh they you know i had to bring my a game and and it was wonderful That's you know awesome. i i I, cher- I cherish that cherish that experience That's, That's amazing. Awesome. Uh, what about you yep I mean, I, I, everything that we've talked about in this episode, I mean, but specifically like the, like aesthetically yeah. and the performances. And it, it, what's fun about this episode is that it's not just Todd's character who's doing the performance. Yeah. The episode takes on the characteristic of these movies. The so yeah. when Todd hits uh, Jamie, the way she falls like back on yeah. the bed and stuff like all of that is so classic yeah, of of those good. movies. And it's like, she's yeah. not playing a part, but the episode, like it's, it's this fun kind of thing where it's like, he's pulled the entire world around him into this thing. And you kind of can't help, but be caught in the I gravity would, of it. Like it's, I, it's to, like, to, fun to, about that to the minutia of it. Uh, and I got to bounce super soon, but mm-hmm. uh, to the, the minutia of it, uh, I was would work with the makeup artist to say that the lips have to be behind the lip line, right? Like when they add the, di- it's not on the lip; it's behind it, and there's this little line of white. So right. we like worked hard to to, to just find the minutia of specificity again even how i hold my hands and just to 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 match the level that the production design was doing Mm -hmm. the cinematographer was doing that everybody was bringing to this episode it was and it was the halloween episode of that season so that was fun and and i've I've seen some of those classic movies certainly not all or anything like that but it does kind of feel now that like this episode of supernatural is now going to operate for me the way the like cape fear episode of the simpsons did when i finally saw cape fear and i was like oh yeah. shit that now if i go back and watch some of those other yeah. movies that i haven't seen i'm gonna be like oh my god it's that like i get it like bride of frankenstein is so good wow. yeah, one of the see, best like, of that era and even just last night watching this i was like god i gotta watch more of these i gotta yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so what are you gonna yeah. review and if it uh, does bring a generation a younger generation to those classic movies more power to it oh, and if yeah. you haven't seen the spanish language version of dracula oh it's just on, it's on the same disc i'm, I'm gonna finish with this because like i said i gotta yeah I gotta yes. bounce, but yeah. uh it's on this. If you get the anniversary edition of Dracula, they give you also the Spanish language version, which was shot during the night when they were shooting the Todd Browning version during the day. And the director of that would watch what they were doing and then go, I could do that better. So it's it's actually more experimental and and in many ways superior to Browning's version. Crazy. Wow, that's that's crazy. So, Todd, I know you got to go. Um, it, yep. As you're leaving us, uh, is there anything that you can plug or promote anywhere people can find you online? Uh, I have a video game that I wrote coming out <gasps> in. Oh uh, yeah! In Holy shit! Called, that's right. Called Forspoken. Oh, I, can't uh, I am currently working with uh, Skydance New Media on a uh, 
uh, a Marvel video game as a writer. So that's uh, really fun. I, uh, I'm I'm acting on a thing that I can't talk about, but the nerds' <laughs> brains will explode. Um, and uh, and I have a nerdy merchandise site called the Nerd Circus, where I sell D and D dice and dice towers. And for the supernatural fans, I have a close up of my mouth as Dracula, and it says hashtag No Garlic. Holy uh, so, shit. I, so I sell that T shirt at thenerdcircus.com, um, and I have a D and D themed cocktail book called Mystic Libations. Uh, so it's a tiki cocktail book, but it's also D&D-ish inspired. Oh, I love uh, that. That's all available at thenerdcircus.com. Um, that's all I got. And watch 12 Monkeys on Hulu. Oh, hell yeah. All right, Todd, thank, thank you, you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining us, Todd. This was a blast. Peace, guys. All this right. was an absolute blast. We could talk longer, but uh, <laughs> I got a, you know, life. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, right. Thank you so much. It was much. a pleasure, dudes. See ya. Peace out. Adios. But I just said peace out. Like it's 1996. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> all uh, right. So, I, what is your review? So I, I, yeah. I mean, all those things I love. Like, to, it, it's an episode that doesn't have the brothers fighting. That always kind of helps. Yeah, you get through stuff. Everyone's playing the same game and working together so well, including that actor who may or may not be related to Ethan Hawke or the yes. Arquette. You know, like in any other episode of Supernatural, he'd be the guest star. Yeah. But he's just also in this episode. So funny. It's a very strong episode performance wise and everything. I think I, I've got to give it five pizzas. Oh, was there garlic on that pizza? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, this is one of the things that specifically like Serge Doucet like is so good at mm -hmm. is lighting. Yeah. It's one of the best things to do a black and white episode is really to lean on lighting. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the th main things that, that he's the best at. And this, that black and white requires because you're not dealing with shade any, or you're not dealing with colors. You're just dealing with shade, yeah. which means lighting is imperative. Yeah. I mean, and for some of that is the literal like thirties lighting, yeah. like those kind of cues. And some of it is like, I it's not even a specific anything, but the lighting in that scene where the little moped yeah. is scooting away on the moped is like it's perfect. You see Dean in the back, there's light in the alley back there. It's this little thing with the light on the so front going like, beep beep. <laughs> it's so it's fucking so funny. Good. I I I love it. And so from yeah, from a cinematography standpoint, it's one of the strongest episodes we've had so far. And a show that's all we're ready, really, really good for yeah. that. Um fucking Todd's performance is like uh, transcended in some ways like it's it, it's, it's so goddamn good because it, it to be able to turn to that real sincere I forgot how moment. actual he's not in the episode that much yeah if but looking back it feels like it's all about him like it, it's and that's a sign of a really strong performance yeah. like where it's just like you don't you doesn't you don't need a lot of him to really 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 pull throughout the whole yeah episode. it's funny because even watching it last night and then talking about it now I was like he definitely like shows up in the first half yeah but you and realize it's like, it's like Oh, it's like it's more like he shows up and then he's there. Yeah. And even after watching it very recently, I was like, no, he like goes and comes back and yeah. No, yeah. It it's yeah. I mean, it's such a fucking great performance. It's awesome, yeah. It's uh yeah, I mean, it's it's a near perfect episode, I think. Like it's definitely for me, I'm going to give it like 5 uh, vampires on Vespas like out of Oh, five. yeah. It's 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 so for it five Vespire. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Vespa Vespular. Uh, Vespula. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, that is our review for this week's episode. If you have a note about this episode, maybe something that we maybe even missed, or, or you just want to talk to us about Supernatural, you can reach us through our email. Uh, ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com. Or through all of the different platforms that we are online. That's right. We're at Ghostfacers Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on whatever the platform that you're using so you automatically get a, our episode in your feed every week. And it also helps with us with our numbers and all that stuff, including to help us with those numbers is giving us those five-star reviews. Yeah, we've, uh, we've got a, f a few that have come in. Yeah, yeah. We haven't lost them. We will uh, read them on an episode. Definitely, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you but for sending those. That's yeah. super helpful. It helps us rank um, up. 
If it's not on the Apple Podcast platform or Facebook or something, just make sure to take a screenshot and send it to us on one of, on one of those platforms because right. we don't automatically get them, so we don't always know where they are. Uh, if you want to continue to support the show, make sure to buy our merch. Buy our merch. Ghostfacerspodcaststore.com. And if you want to continue to support us, we have a whole other platform. We we hinted at it a few times this show, mostly just because I want to get Tad, Todd on that uh, uh, that show as well. But we have another podcast. That's right. Uh, Dr. DC Podcast. I almost forgot what it was called. I've been having so much fun here. Today. I know. Uh, we talk about DC Comics. We answer listener questions. We talk about the lore of how those worlds work. So if Liz. you like how we talk about Supernatural and how this world works, you might enjoy that too. You don't need to know anything about comics. It's just a fun time. Totally. Uh, all right. That is it for this week. Say goodbye, bitch. Jerk. podcast.